boys and girls. Today, I'm going to share this story with you. It's The Glorious Flight Across the Channel with Louis Berlo, and it's by Alice and Martine Provisen. And two things I want to share with you before I start this story is the idea of a genre. And what that means is what style of writing is it? So for example, um, we have the categories of fiction and nonfiction. Okay, sometimes we have stuff that kind of walks in between those. This will be an example of that. Um, you might have realistic fiction, like our story Schooled that we have read. Uh, you might have nonfiction, like a biography or an autobiography, like the true story of one of our presidents. Uh, or Michelle Obama wrote a nice uh, autobiography um, about herself. We are working in class on personal narratives. That means that it's a story about you and it's true, okay? Whereas other types of narrative writing might be truly fiction, made up. Um, again, schooled is an example of that. It sounds real, but it's not. This story here is based on history, but it would be kind of walking the line of the facts in it are true, but the story between the people is made up. So we would probably categorize it as historical fiction to be truly accurate, but there's a lot we can learn about aviation from this story, which is flight, okay? All the process of airplanes and flying is called aviation. And I will show you how I know this. In the back of this book, there's kind of an afterwards where the author tells us what gave them the inspiration for their story. And it says, Louis Berlo, 1872 to 1936, was one of the truly great pioneers of aviation. He devoted the fortune acquired by his invention of an automobile searchlight to de the development and construction of his high-performance aircraft, the Brillo 11. His flight across the English Channel demonstrated to the world that barriers of land and sea no longer existed for the airplane. And I think it's neat that we can learn so much from different types of just picture books, right? Doesn't seem like a difficult read, but in reality, it's information that anybody would want to know, children or adults. Okay, so it all began one morning. Mr. Louis Berlot, his oldest daughter, Alicette, his daughter of four years, Charmaine, his third daughter, Suzette, and his son, Gino their mama Alice, and the baby Gabrielle, also the cat Manu, and their little dog Arasini, and the big cockatoo Chloe, have just had their breakfast. The year is 1901. The place is the city of Chambray in France. So, and here they are eating breakfast. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. Papa Berlo and all his family, except Minou the cat and Chloe the cockatoo, are going for a ride in their shiny new car. I love when the illustrators can show the time period by the vehicles that they use. So neat. As they roll up the street, they hear far above in the sky a strange sound. Clack it up, clack it up, clack it up. Hark! says Papa Berlo. He does not look where he is going. Just ahead on the narrow street is a wagon of Alphonse Juvet, full of pumpkins, also his son César, and many cabbages. <laughs> Goes the car into the cart of Alphonse Juvet. The strange sound from the air is forgotten. Papa Rouleau was driving very slowly, but even so, the cart is on its side. Pumpkins all over. No one is hurt, but there are bruised cabbages and angry faces. Fists are raised. The policeman, Arcel Duval, poises his pencil when... Clackada, 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 clackada. Out of the clouds, right over their heads, soars a great white airship, and a man is sitting in a basket, driving it through the air. What a wonderful sight! It is the first airship seen over the city of Chambray. 
Papa Berlot invites everyone to the café. They toast the valiant aeronaut and each other, and César, the brave ju juvet boy, and the pumpkins. Everyone is happy. And that's all that little problem. Look at that airship. I don't think I'd be comfortable in one of those. It's very daring. Everyone but Luis Berlot. Now he has only one wish. He says to his family, I too will build a flying machine, a great white bird. We will work hard. We will all fly through the air like swallows. So here is Berlot one. No one is small enough to sit in it but Minot, and she will not. It has a little motor to make the wings flap. Alas, it flaps like a chicken. Never mind. Yeah, and I think the cat Minou is smart not to want to be in that. This is more like it. Here is below two. A glider, big enough to hold a man. Papa has not yet learned to pilot, so Gabriel Voisin, his good friend, will fly. A motorboat will tow it into the air as the glider has no motor. All is in readiness. Gabriel gives the signal. So these people are inventors and pioneers. So cool. Do you imagine taking all these risks? I imagine they pay attention to safety. And all the failure. Away rose, roars the motorboat. Like a great swan, the beautiful glider rises into the air and shoots down into the river with a splash that frightens the fish. Gabriel Voisin is wet but not hurt. We almost flew, he says. So I guess they had a colossal failure there. And I believe there's a saying, failure leads to success. Seems like they're not giving up. Papa has decided to learn to fly himself. Berlo three has a fine motor and propeller, but it will not take off from the water. So Papa gives it two motors and two propellers to make Berlo four. Berlo four goes in beautiful circles. Papa is learning. That looks like something I've seen in Florida that they use on the water. Berlo 5 hops over the ground like a rabbit. Papa is getting lots of practice. But Berlo 5, it sails across a whole field before it hits a rock. Not so bad. Oh, sorry, Berlo 6. We went from 5 to 6, not backwards. And with Berlo 7, Papa has an aeroplane that really can fly, no matter that the inevitable happens, a slight crash, a broken rib, a black eye, to add to the list of breaks, sprains, and bruises over the past six years. Wow, this is not happening overnight, you guys. This takes a lot of perseverance. And look at the process of aviation. We all fly in planes everywhere now. Now, Papa is a real flyer, and the Berlot is a real airplane. How proud Elisette, Charmant, Suzette, Ginot, Gabrielle, and Mama are. Only one thing remains, to prove how good the airplane is, to show the world what it can do. As if to light the spark, a great prize is offered to the first man to fly across the English Channel. Twenty miles wide, black, tossing waves, fog and rain, a very cold bath. A long swim, it is a dangerous prospect, just what Papa likes. And then here's the announcement. On July 25th, 1909, as the sun rises, Papa Berlot walks with his crutch, a minor flying accident, nothing serious, out of the field where his plane Berlot uh, 11 waits. He kisses Alicette, Charmant, Suzette, Gino, Gabrielle, and Maman Berlot. Papa climbs into the cockpit. His friend Alfred Leblanc spins the propeller. It is 4.35 a.m. It's pretty exciting. How would you feel if you were doing this flight? Put yourself in the character's shoes. The motor coughs, sputters, roars, down the grassy field. Berlot 11 bumps, 
She picks up speed and suddenly climbs into the air. The French coast disappears. Far below is the destroyer, Escopé, waiting to pick up Papa if his motor fails, if they can find him in time. Ten minutes tick by. The waves reach up to catch the tiny plane. Now there is nothing but swirling fog. No France, no England, no waves. Papa is alone, lost. He sits motionless, not touching the steering lever and lets the plane go wherever it will. Suddenly, wow, wow. The white cliffs of Dover flash beneath him. A wonderful moment. 36 minutes after taking off from France, Papa is over England. Papa stops his engine and makes a very bad landing, as usual. Never mind about the broken propeller. Luis Bilot is in England. He flew there in 37 minutes. What a shout goes up. Truly, it was a glorious flight. And that is the end of our book. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you think about maybe researching some aviation and what the history of it is. And notice that this story took place in France. We also have the Wright brothers in the United States who also were very into aviation. So it's got a lot of history and interest. You could create an awesome timeline looking at how they developed aviation over time to our modern airplanes. I hope that gets you thinking. Take care. Bye.